Hello everyone, Pharma Peel welcomes you all busy people to yet another learning video. In this video, we are going to learn about the GMP updates of October 2022. Before we begin, let me tell you one thing that this is our third video on the GMP updates, and those who are the regular viewers of the Pharma Peel channel, they are aware of the fact that Pharma Peel channel brings GMP updates of previous month in the very first week of every month. And we bring those updates which are important for all the pharma professionals. So with this note, let's get started with the GMP updates of October 2022. GMP update number one. This update is for those pharma professionals who are dealing with the nitrosamine impurities. So guys, you should be aware of the fact that EMA, European Medicines Agency, publishes the recent developments related to the nitrosamine impurities in the form of question and answer time to time. So in the month of October, EMA has updated the question and answer document related to the nitrosamine impurities. So on 12th of October 2022, EMA has published this question and answer document on its website. Now the question arises that what are the changes in this question and answer document? So guys, answer to this question is, before this revision, there were 19 questions and now number of questions has been increased up to 21. So two new questions has been included in this document. So let us see what are those newly included questions. So here you can see that question number 10 and question number 21 has been included newly. So question number 10 says, which limits apply for the nitrosamines in medicinal products? And question number 21 says, what is the approach to control the presence of nitrosamines until a substance specific acceptable intake is established? So guys, this was the GMP update number one. GMP update number two. This update is for those pharma professionals who takes care of audits and compliance. Well friends, US FDA has updated the two GMP inspections related guidelines and those are chapter 46 and chapter 56. These two guidelines are called as CPGs, which means Compliance Program Guides. Title of the chapter 46 is New Drug Evaluation and the title of the chapter 56 is Drug Quality Assurance. Now let us understand what exactly is the difference between these two guidelines. So chapter 46 deals with the pre-approval inspections, whereas chapter 56 deals with the routine surveillance inspections. GMP update number three. This update is for those pharma professionals who are working in the quality control department, specifically in the chromatography section. So guys, EDQM has published a 22 pages document on the revised journal chapter number 2.2.46, chromatographic separations techniques. As you might be aware of the fact that journal chapter number 2.2.46, whose title is chromatographic separations techniques has been revised and it will be made effective from 1st of Jan 2023 when 11th edition of European Pharmacopoeia will be implemented. This 22 pages document published by the EDQM provides a comparison of the requirements included in the 10th edition versus 11th edition of the European Pharmacopoeia. So let us understand with the help of an example. So here you can see on the screen that as per 10th edition of the European Pharmacopoeia, tailing factor limit was 0.8 to 1.5. Whereas in the 11th edition of European Pharmacopoeia, limit for the tailing factor will be 0.8 to 1.8 unless otherwise specified in your test method. So likewise, you can check the other comparison details in this 22 pages document. I have dropped the link in the description. If you want, you can check it. GMP update number four. This GMP update is for those pharma professionals who are working in the packing material quality control. So guys, European Pharmacopoeia has revised journal chapter number 3.2.9 and the title of journal chapter number 3.2.9 is Rubber Closers for the Containers of Aqueous Parenteral Preparations. So let us see what are the changes made in the various sections of this journal chapter. So under definitions and scope, it is mentioned that the rubber closures include stoppers for the vials as well as needle shields and plunger stoppers for syringes, etc. The use of the natural rubber latex is not permitted, but dry natural rubber may be used since allergens are removed during the processing. Heavy metal test has been deleted to align with the ICSQ3D and European Pharmacopoeia policy on elemental impurities. 
However, extractable zinc testing is still required. And under fragmentation, the specific testing procedure for the closures used for the dry preparations has been removed. And furthermore, it has been clarified that uh, manufacturer of pharmaceutical preparation must obtain assurance from the suppliers that composition of the closures not changed and that is identical to the one used during the compatibility testing. Now comes the GMP update number 5. And in this update, we will visit US FDA website to know that for the month of October 2022, how many Form 483s were issued or uploaded on the US FDA website related to the Indian Pharma companies. So friends, here you can see US FDA website and you will find that for two Indian Pharma companies, Form 483s are uploaded on the US FDA website for the month of October 2022. And these are the two companies, Torrent Pharma and Jubilant Generics. So guys, Indrat Gujarat facility of the Torrent Pharma was issued Form 483 with three observations. Whereas Jubilant Generics Dehradun facility was issued Form 483 with six observations. If you want to know about these observations of Torrent Pharma, then you can check the link given in the description. And in upcoming days, I will upload video on Jubilant Pharma 483 observations as well. Now comes the last GMP update and in this update, we will see that what are the recalls initiated by the Indian pharmaceutical companies. For that matter, we have to visit the US FDA website. So here you can see for the month of October 2022, Arvindo Pharma has initiated voluntary national wide recall of two lots of the Quinpril and Hydrochlorothiazide tablets USP 20mg 12.5mg due to the presence of nitrosamine impurities. This product is indicated for the treatment of hypertension to lower the blood pressure. And you might be aware of the fact that exposure to nitrosamine impurities if above the acceptable levels or over a long period of time may increase the risk of cancer. So US FDA has said that till Arvindo Pharma has not received any reports of adverse events related to this recall. And this recall has been classified as a class 3 category recall. Now the question arises that what is a class 3 category recall? So guys, as per US FDA, a class 3 recall is initiated in a situation in which use or exposure to a violative product is not likely to cause adverse health consequences. So guys, these were the six important GMP updates for the month of October 2022, which every pharma professional should be aware of. Hope you have found this video helpful. With this note, I would like to wrap up the video for now. See you soon in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and happy learning.